Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, Agri-Food Conversations brought to you by iSelect Fund, the Van Trump Report, the Yield Lab Institute, and Family Farms Group. My name is David Yoakum. I'm a principal here on the iSelect Fund Ventures team, and I'm excited to welcome you to our discussion today. Uh, Agri-Food Conversations is all about driving innovation in agriculture. Each month, we highlight a specific theme, this month's theme being agroforestry. On today's call, we are joined by Ethan Steinberg, CEO of Propagate. Propagate offers agroforestry project development and, investment and investments platform. By using agronomic tools, local climate and economic tools, as well as a powerful database on how annual crops and tree crops can be combined, Propagate can evaluate each parcel based on potential future revenue. Better still, the Propagate team can take parcels purchased for investment and execute the complete planting and cultivation strategy, delivering a landowner a farm with complete functional operations and maintenance that delivers defined revenue expectations for the future. Now, each of you knows that companies are more likely to succeed with the right network of customers, talent, investors, and advisors. We invite you to this call because you're some of the smartest, most talented people in Propagate's market. You're potential customers for Propagate's products and services. You have built a company similar to Propagate's, or you have unique expertise and understand the challenges and opportunities that Propagate may face. Now, before we get started, we have a quick poll question to get a better idea of who we have on the call today. Please take a few seconds to answer. And while that poll is running, we have a few process comments. Um, and Ethan, if you can jump out the next slide, that'd be great. Um, we are not soliciting investment. This presentation is to provide information to help propagate, find customers, mentors, and other strategic relationships that can help them grow their business. You can ask, you can use the Q&A box to ask a question at any time, and we will answer as many questions as time allows at the end of the presentation. And finally, this webinar is being recorded and will be available for replay. So without further delay, I am pleased to introduce Ethan Steinberg, CEO of Propagate. Ethan, while I is in here, feel free to take it away. Awesome. Thanks so much. Appreciate y'all having me. It's always a pleasure. Uh, as David mentioned, Propagate's focused on enabling agroforestry uh, within the United States and in agriculture, uh, making it easier for folks to adopt uh, the integration of fruit, nut, and timber trees with a crop or animal farming system. Uh, I'll take some time to walk you through uh, why we started the business, how we do it, what we do, uh, I'll also kind of sort of walk through our growth over the last couple of years, what our product looks like, uh, and uh, how we interact with the market. And then I look forward to uh, Q and A. When we started the company in 2017, uh, we were very much focused on the macro level challenges in in our industry. And the two key ones here is uh, thin margins on farm, uh, as well as uh, increasing challenges around carbon. Now, we've remained focused on agroforestry as an opportunity to uh, provide a solution towards those two macro level challenges I just mentioned. Uh, agroforestry, again, being the integration of fruit, nut, uh, and timber crops. Uh, the photo you have in this slide is a great example of a more mature uh, system. It actually comes from France. This is wheat and poplar. Um, now, what we've learned uh, over the course of our tenure as a business is that uh, most farms that we're working with are adopting agroforestry practices because it makes financial sense without the requirement of carbon credits. And this primarily has to do with the uh, increase in earnings on a per acre basis due to taking advantage of that second story, that vertical space on farm for high value permanent crops like fruits and nuts. Uh, now, that being said, we are planting trees, so carbon is part of the part of the conversation here and certainly something that our team is focused on uh, given the cha challenges of climate change. The reason we find agroforestry particularly interesting as it relates to carbon is that it's arguably seven times more effective at emissions reduction than other soil carbon practices like a no-till or cover cropping. And that planting trees on roughly 20 acres of farmland, or sorry, 20%, it's a lot more than 20 acres, I apologize. 20% of US farmland uh, would sequester all of uh, the annual emissions of the agricultural industry in the United States. So some pretty significant numbers here uh, that tell us the upside is rather extraordinary. Uh, some other components here I just wanna share with you all on why agroforestry is so impactful, uh, carbon being a component here. Uh, another interesting area as far as ecosystem services go is mitigation of runoff and water retention. Uh, as far as economic development goes, we predict about one full-time job per every 100 acres of agroforestry developed. 
Uh, and then uh, some of the benefits from an economic perspective, uh, things like increase in weight gain on cattle due to a reduction of heat and wind stress in silvopasture systems, uh, as well as a larger tree size when you're planting uh, effectively a wider density, the trees are a little bit less competitive uh, with one another. So just quickly to share with you uh, how we do all of this now that we have a better understanding of why we, we open the doors towards building this business. Um, we focus on making it easier for farms to implement by providing access to agronomic insights, technical assistance, and financial products to support uh, the development process. Uh, we deliver this through a software platform. It's called Overyield. I'll walk through what that looks like in a second. Um, and we also have built a services suite uh, around the software application as a way to ensure uh, less risk and uh, guarantee technical assistance as far as uh, developing an acre goes. Over the last couple of years, we've grown. We've got about 75 farms we work with. It's roughly 600,000 trees that will be planted uh, across 20,000 acres. Uh, sort of the makeup of what our customer portfolio looks like. Now, I, I did promise that I would share a bit about our product and how this is delivered. Uh, so I will jump into that. Our product is called Overyield. Uh, something we put in market last year to help streamline the, the process. Uh, Overyield is really focused on being a comprehensive tool uh, with a goal of making it easier for a farmer or service provider uh, to analyze farmland more effectively and with the right information so that we can move towards planting faster. And this all gets back to some of those initial uh, macro level challenges that I was discussing a bit earlier uh, around more trees planted allows us to increase economic output on farm and provide a healthy solution as far as climate is concerned. You got a little bit of a screenshot of homepage here uh, of Overyield. Uh, we'll dig into the, the agricultural design piece of it here. Typically what we're focused on is allowing folks uh, to draw a polygon on a map. Uh, this is gonna come with a templatized design uh, on a per crop basis. It's also gonna take into account uh, water, soil, topographical information, uh, and uh, what zone uh, you are, what region you are in the country. Uh, this is going to help us get down to a per tree on uh, what's needed on a per tree basis in terms of OPEX and CAPEX requirements to capitalize these systems. Uh, with, our, with our tool, if you can see each of these little dots right underneath where it says field D, each of those dots is a tree itself. They're geotagged. This gives us the ability to plug in with uh, things like robots to increase the speed of, of planting a system. Uh, an easy example here is we can export data from Overyield into a robot that we use, uh, basically drives around farm and marks where each of the tree go, trees go, uh, increases the speed and time at which we can get those trees in the ground. Now, because we're focused on the tree as a, as a unit here, uh, it allows us to dig a little bit more into the agronomic insights. This is where we really wanna focus on uh, making sure that information around costs, revenues, yield projections, labor assumptions, uh, carbon forecasts as well, uh, are very transparent and clear for uh, every farm that we work with, along with you know, any service provider that's, that's part of the process. Um, here, we're gonna be digging into operating expenses, capital expenditures uh, that are going to have a material effect on the, the farm business. Uh, particularly as you think about integrating some of these other crops like a chestnut or a black currant uh, into, into the system. So we're gonna bring the forest to the field uh, is sort of my kitschy way of saying that. And we're gonna dig in on uh, the nuances here by crop by year uh, around installation, ongoing farm management, harvest of those crops, as well as marketing. So we have a lot of clarity in terms of the agronomic projection and for forecast throughout the future. Today, uh, Overyield is used by a number of, of different customer segments, farmers, landowners, technical service providers, and agribusinesses, um, all of whom are working with land to transition to more what I'll call climate smart practices. Uh, and that, that market's continuing to grow for us as the trend uh, 
continues to be a positive one as far as transition towards things like regenerative. Uh, really quickly run you guys through what the development timeline looks like, and then lots of pictures to show uh, what's happened in real life. I always find uh, in, our, in our game, pictures literally speak a thousand words. Uh, as far as the design and development process goes, uh, working, how we work with customers is another way to think about this. Uh, we generally have a kickoff with a, a farm, uh, go through a design meeting uh, and finalize the design. Uh, a lot of that happens within the app and we make sure our team's you know, there to support the key stakeholders on farm, the key decision makers. Uh, from there, we start getting to work on the actual site prep uh, to develop the system and establish the agroforestry system itself. Uh, here, similar to a solar developer, they're gonna send an engineer out to go review your roof. We do a site visit with with the landowner, with the farmer to get a deeper understanding of making sure that everything that we saw from a satellite image on our computer is, is real. Uh, now have another design meeting to go through the game plan and then a financial meeting to talk about some of those OPEX and CAPEX requirements, you know, outputs, things that we're pulling from uh, the information on our side from overyield. Then that time frame, we start to get to work on helping around some of those services areas around product development that I mentioned earlier the goal here is to increase technical assistance and reduce operational risk on the ground. So we'll take that, that time, that timeline uh, plan for development, along with some site prep, building topsoil effectively, um, then start to make sure that we're, we're, we're supporting on the side of procurement for things like genetic stock, seeds, cuttings, et cetera, uh, inputs, et cetera. Those components that are going to go uh, hand in hand with developing an agroforestry system. Uh, we end up finalizing our species and tree count, uh, generally trees and shrubs. Uh, and then we, we ensure that, that those purchase orders are placed uh, so that we're ready to go uh, in the spring uh, to plant. Generally, this process takes a couple of months, as you can see here, call it about a year. Um, you know, that's a perfect timeline. We've certainly done it on faster timeframes. Uh, and we're always trying to ensure that we're getting ahead of the curve in terms of uh, what's needed uh, for, for more acreage to be developed across the United States uh, into these agroforestry systems because of the upside that exists uh, for, for farms as far as economic benefit from producing another crop or ecological benefit from a carbon, uh, water, or biodiversity perspective. Spin through some photos here and then would love to have a QA. Uh, this is these next couple of photos will show you like design to actual planted uh, computer image to real world example. Maybe a better way to put that. This is a farm actually in New York. You got a chestnut black current uh, alley cropping system here. So the, the currents are grown in the alleys of chestnut trees. Um, that's uh, you can sort of see the orange and purple on this map is going to highlight that. Uh, now, this is a drone image we took of uh, this farm. This farm actually see its first harvest this year, black currants. Uh, what you see there in the tree tubes are the chestnuts, and then you see the rows of currants uh, pretty clearly in that image. Just another view here for y'all to see. Uh, and then I've got some photos for you on the actual development process. Now, as y'all know, uh, it's an active site. Um, so just love showing the examples here. Continue to work through some of these. Planting the trees. Um, here's, a, here's a ground image. Uh, we, one of the learnings for us here was because of that work we did on topsoil in year one in building topsoil, uh, we actually work with a farm that's quite literally across the street uh, of this one and planted the same species uh, of chestnut and uh, our trees grew a little bit faster within the same time frame. Uh, this photo was taken year two, I believe, uh, across the street. The trees had not grown taller than the tree tubes on, on our farm they had. Uh, so those regenerative practices translate to pretty real world um, benefits. And then lastly here, uh, you know, these systems can be applied across a number of farms. I know I showed you a chestnut black current example, 
although we're certainly working with other folks, you got shrubs and, and uh, chickens here. With that, uh, that's Propagate in a nutshell and looking forward to having a conversation uh, through Q&A. Awesome, Ethan, thank you for the presentation. Um, and again, really exciting work the Propagate's building. Um, if you do have a question, the best way to ask a question is to type in the Q&A box. I'll make that distinction between the Q&A box and the chat. Um, let's do Q&A instead of chat. It's just easier to manage it all in one place. Um, but I think, you know, Ethan, one thing just to sort of kick off the conversation that I've found interesting and compelling about probably, particularly the overyield platform, can you just help the audience understand a little bit about how challenging and slow it is to develop an agroforestry project today and how much time you guys save on project, either doing projects yourselves or helping others develop projects by using the overyield tool and maybe how that translates into an ROI of some kind? Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate that question. Uh, what, when we started looking at agroforestry in 2017, we found that uh, the space itself uh, is very fragmented from bespoke consultants, agronomists, surveyors, et cetera, and very regionalized. Um, where we knew software could provide at least a useful tool here was to start integrating some of those, those otherwise fragmented components of our industry into a, a single place. Um, which is where, which is really where the idea for Overyield came together. Now, as we've worked on it over the years, what we're finding is it's creating about a 10 X increase in efficiency or speed from going from a, an idea to a plan to execution. Uh, the development of the, of the agroforestry plan. Uh, and working across that fragmented ecosystem, uh, in, historically took us about 80 hours. Uh, prior to Overyield being built. Now, post having the software tool uh, at our disposal, it takes us roughly eight hours. So it's about a 10x increase. That's, and that's rather material uh, in terms of getting to the actual execution, the planting of, of those systems. Awesome. Thanks, Ethan. Um, initial question from the audience. Um, do you do any sort of detailed soil analysis for planning projects like this? Example, like, do it, like taking a soil profile of some kind? Short answer is yes. You know, we're, we're looking for certain pH levels, et cetera, in the soil. Um, so we'll generally do a soil test before we, um, before we plant. Uh, and we're building out some more functionality on overyield uh, that looks more at existing uh, soil data sets, public data, private data, um, that gives us more clarity on crop suitability. So, uh, what, where certain crops should be planted uh, across a, a landscape based off of things like soil, water, and topographical information. And so the short answer is yes. Uh, cool. Um, yeah. One thing I'm curious about, Ethan, um, is you should, it, it's inspired by some of the images that you showed. Are, are most, and maybe you can tie this a little bit into some of the work you guys are doing in Hudson Valley, where you've seen a lot of some of your initial progress, but are, are most growers and operations that do adopt agroforestry through um, through Propagate, are they typically converting unused land into agroforestry production or are they typically integrating with existing systems? Yeah, great question. Uh, when we started the company, it was more fallow land. That's evolved uh, pretty significantly over the last couple of years. Um, where we have uh, non-operating landowners, uh, if the farm's not already operating in, for a certain crop, then we're looking at more of a, a game plan to begin a new project. You know, we're generally looking at new trees planted rather than restoration of uh, an orchard, for example. Um, well, what we're starting to expand a lot more now, uh, particularly as the business grows and we, we launch more partnerships, um, we're finding that the operating landowner, if you will, is, is becoming a more active segment for us to work in. For example, we just, um, we just finished up a planting in Kentucky, uh, which will now, which is turned Mason County, which is where that, that project is, into one of the largest chestnut planting sites in the country. It's a partnership we launched with Cargill um, this year, and the the farmer owner of that property is a corn soy rotation. Now that's transitioning to you know areas of the farm that would be otherwise better suited for chestnuts. 
uh, we think about the sort of longer term strategy uh, and economic resiliency of the total acreage that he manages. But in, in terms of in terms of that farm specifically, they're they're taking corn and soy out of production in this instance and choosing to plant tree crops instead, as opposed to integrated production. Uh, yes, and what we're that forty percent metric, if you go back to some of the slides I had, that's based off of the the increased value of that marginal land from the harvest of a chestnut. Uh, you look wholesale of chestnuts about. Um, Three to five bucks retail is about six to ten. Yeah, so we got a rather high value crop here. Uh, so while there is a marginal amount of acreage taken out of production of say corn or soy, uh, the increased value from a new crop like a chestnut outweighs uh, the you know, the loss. Awesome. I'm gonna pause. Actually, well, I think the last thing I, there's been a little bit of press out recently on on Cargill's work in agroforestry and your guys's hand in that. Um, you want to just cover off a little bit more on what's going on there? Yeah, sure. Um, we I can I can share with everyone the link to an article if you think that'd be helpful. Um, drop that in the chat for everyone. Uh, Yeah, so the work that's going on there, um, we started working with Cargill last year uh, on this project, uh, have some farmers we're working with in Kentucky who are uh, adopting agroforestry practices, uh, thinking about the, the future markets for chestnuts and what the development is there, knowing that it's, it's a growing, there's a growing trend uh, and demand for the crop, uh, particularly in Asia and Europe, uh, but growing in the United States. Uh, and the United States is a very good growing region, particularly in Kentucky. Uh, so the, the goal here was to bring some of these options forward to farmers in the region uh, and help create uh, an opportunity for reducing some of the operational challenges, having propagate you know, and its partners come forward with some of the experience and knowledge to implement on these systems, making it easier for folks on the ground to, to transition uh, with a clear argument as to why it would be valuable from an economic perspective. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, Ethan, uh, in terms of um, asks of the audience, is there anything you guys are looking for in particular right now, you know, in regards to sort of business development, talent, et cetera, that the audience can help you out with? And if so, how can they reach you? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for asking. Expanding our customer base is certainly a major focus as we build out more functionality on overyield. Uh, working with a, a number more technical service providers, uh, overyields, uh, I think, a rather clean tool uh, in terms of taking what might otherwise be endless spreadsheets and AutoCAD and integrating it into something with a, a more straightforward UI. Uh, so that's an area that we're certainly focused on. Uh, channel partnerships as well, you know, areas where we're working with folks to, to help bring agroforestry as an option to more landowners. Um, and I guess, I guess as an entrepreneur and in today's market, I'd be wrong not to say we're always on the hunt for great talent. Um, we're currently, we're currently hiring for a VP of sales, uh, as well as we'll likely be expanding our, our search for more talent in the future. Cool. And how, what's the best way people get a hold of you? Yeah, my email is fine. Ethan at propagateag.com. Great. Awesome. Uh, well, Ethan, thanks so much for uh, joining us today. Uh, congrats on all the progress today. I'd also, also like to thank the audience for your active participation and for anyone listening on recording. Um, we do host agri-food conversations every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central Time. Um, if you'd like to share this with a friend, please do so. Uh, a repo will be emailed to you in the next 24 hours. Um, and new viewers can go register for agri-food conversations by going to agrifoodconversations.com. And if you'd like to learn more, uh, please join us next week as we continue our focus on agroforestry with Sale of Sciences Salo Sciences guides investments in natural climate solutions by leveraging satellite data, ecological modeling, and AI. Um, Ethan, thanks so much. Great to see you again, and um, everyone have a great rest of your day. Thanks, everyone. Bye.